5.30 and we'll start right out. Um, Congratulations. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, do we want to do an introduction? Does everybody know everyone here? Do we want to make sure? I don't know, Amanda, you don't know? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess then we, I think everybody's here then. We're, we're, we'll, we'll, go, we'll skip right up to 2.1 approval of the minutes from June 29th. Move to approve the second. minutes. Motion's made and seconded. Any other discussion on those? Alrighty. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. 3.1. Resolution 3721-22, July 19, 2021, document 4.9, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept two grants from the Wisconsin Coastal Management Program. Director? Yes, Mr. Chairman, these um, are Wisconsin Coastal Management Grants, uh, and we have actually had two applications from the department. One was with uh, Joe Curlin, our superintendent of parks and forestry, is mm -hmm. looking to update our comprehensive park and open space plan. Uh, it's a plan that needs to be updated every five years. And that plan also then once uh, approved and communicated and updated is eligible for other grant opportunities through the DNR for park and rec and other activities. So it's a very important piece for planning as well as helping us then do master plans as well as improvements in other areas of the city for our parks and rec areas. So, and Joe, if you want to just add some more about the comp plan. And yeah. Then... yeah, this is this is the well, current one, but it ended in 2020. Um, the one before this, the city worked with the consultants and I can't remember the name of them, but, um, and then when that was due, I worked with uh, Janet from planning and we basically took that, we mm -hmm. did a, how old it did a lot of our stuff ourselves and made our own plan. And we, we think it'd be very beneficial at this time to now work with another um, consultant again. And we worked with Grave um, yeah, for the Grave with uh, JC Park. And that turned out yeah. really nice. So we, we're thinking hopefully we'll, we'll be working with them. So and again, it, it's very imperative <laughs> that we have current ones to allow us to get state and federal grants. And is it, it's all the parks? Yeah, right. so all, 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 all of the parks in the city, you okay. know, trails, parks, anything that's uh, that you can get a, a grant for state federally, mm -hmm. kind of have you have to kind of be able to refer to your plan to, to even be able to try to get that grant. Okay. And do you have the plan here on the DPW website? I'm not sure if we have this one because um, this is like just just outdated. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I sure certainly can get you a copy. We can get you a copy. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that that's the first first grant, and now th these grants are matching. So twenty five thousand will be going for that, which we will also then pay twenty five thousand for a total of fifty thousand. And when we get the grant, uh, the consultants on board. We'll bring that back to the committee for your review as well. Look at the, some of the, the work they'll do and the details of the, of their contract for your approval eventually with that as well. The second part of the 25,000 that we also received is going to be used for shoreline restoration, Lake Michigan. This is just one project, but there's about 11 to 12 different areas along Sheboygan's Lakeshore that we've had pretty severe erosion with the high lake water. Therefore, we, we've identified them early on with a, a kind of a preliminary study that was used to help submit this grant. So the grant will help us go to the next phase. We're going to engage an engineering consulting firm. And what they're going to do is they're going to look at each of these sites and develop some plans in terms of how to access for repair, what types of repairs are eligible or what we can do to help protect the shoreline, but also do it in a, not just throw rock down there. We wanna do something more sustainable, much more environmentally sound that will be more blend in with some of the nature. We just don't wanna throw a bunch of concrete along the lake shore and say, oh, we're good, we can walk away. And actually 
the, the permitting agencies, such as the Corps of Engineers, as well as the DNR, are looking for that as well. And that's why they like this grant application is because we're approaching shoreline protection and more an environmental uh, sustainable method. It could, it could be planting vegetation such as trees, but yet allowing views for the neighbors and the property owners along there. So we're looking at a variety of techniques. One of the biggest things as you can imagine is access is very difficult because of the lake bluff. It's steep uh, and with high water levels, there's not a lot of room on the bottom of the slope to traverse. Now we've, we've been fortunate the lake level has come down a little bit, but we're still at a, at a high level. It's only come down 14 inches, which is great. But uh, in normal, it's probably still above two feet about where our normal water level is. So um, that's where that portion of the grant, again, it's matching 25,000 from the state coastal management and then 25 from engineering. And we've already have a, a proposal from both infrastructure both infrastructure is the group that's doing all the design for this. Uh, they're very well versed in shoreline projects. That's part of the reason why they're on this project. And it just seemed like a natural extension since they're doing so much work already that we can pinpoint these other 12 roughly areas and work with them to develop plans for that as well. So we'll be bringing that back in the near future to the committee for your review. Once, once we finalize the grant and we get the monies in place, the next step would be to come back to the committee and, and share those contracts with you on, on that work. Yeah. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out to um, if anyone is interested in what you need, that um, uh, drone video that you did, uh, if someone wants, is that available on? Is it still able I think to, that's uh, still on our, on our website. If someone yeah. wants that wants to see that, that's, uh, that you kind of you point out a lot yes. of those areas in that, and that's, right. you know, you can see if it's. it's well, 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 about a 10 minute video or so. Right. And we're planning to do probably another flight okay. uh, fairly th with this, within the summer. August is a good time because typically the uh, the winds aren't as strong and so we'll have an opportunity here. Um, what I was going to say real quickly too is this is a pretty, 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 um, pretty nice award from the state and coastal management. In fact, they're coming to Sheboygan on Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, and uh, the, Depart uh, the director of department administration from Madison is going to be in town along with the mayor, and we're going to have it at the kayak launch, which was a prior awardee of this program, and they're going to present the big nice check to the city kind of uh, for photo opportunity. So just what want to share that with you. Uh, Thursday at 10. Thank you. I, so I'm completely in favor of this. Uh, when we come back with those projects, I'd love to understand how the private landowners and all that kind of gets worked in when we talk about this further. Um, yes. I'd be really interested in how that works out. That's that's part of the that's part of the study, and that's that's the difficulty. Mm -hmm. The city the, the city does own a lot of the lakeshore. Okay. But then there's private property mm -hmm. at the top of the bluff in a lot of cases. But it's accessing and in, in agreements that how do we access and do we get easements? Do we okay. and and is that a fee easement for this? Or because a lot of this is going to be for the protection of those private properties and not necessarily a lot, even though it's public land on the bottom. It, the primary beneficiary is that private landowner. Yep. So the, the key will be, we're going to do these improvements to your benefit as well. So we're not looking to buy easements or there should be hopefully some uh, mutual understanding mm -hmm. and benef benefit to this project if we both share in that. So that's going to be, that's going to be the big thing. Is any of the river levels does that have anything to do with this? Like, obviously, the water rising is always affecting the river and that flooding. Like, does any of that play in in how your Lake Michigan definitely affects the the river. Okay. It, we're we're so close, and the the height of Lake Michigan actually will will have a, a big factor on the lake uh, the level of the Sheboygan River. In fact, uh, for instance, like the Beer Garden area in that right. last year was all really predicated on Lake Michigan's level, not so much of a lot of rain that was coming through or anything like that. So it, it we we haven't had nearly as much, this is mainly Lake Michigan, mainly, because okay. that's why yeah. it's it's part of that coast, coastal management. Sure, okay. 
I, I will say though, I, I think that their plan and our plan, the the, the five year comp plan can complement each other mm -hmm. because I would say fifty thousand dollars is probably a little high, but we really threw sure in think it's heavy, <laughs> we really threw in heavy um, land management. Okay. And and we have a lot of, of city land along the river. Yeah. So you think about the Sheboygan River and the Pigeon River. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of land management along. Okay. There. So in the grant, we purposely said that we're going to concentrate on that too. For them, for this. Uh, one. For, for yeah, for my grant. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Any other questions? Take a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is passed. 3.2 General Ordinance Number 13-21-22, July 19th, 2021, Document 6.3, an ordinance replacing the traffic control light signal at the intersection of Geely and North 15th Street with stop signs at all four corners of the intersection of Geely Avenue and North 15th. Director. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Again, I, what I'm going to talk about, if you don't mind, I'll defer to Ryan, our, sure. our city engineer. He's been instrumental in, in managing this project and working with the uh, property owners in the intersection. So, um, as, you, as you probably currently know, we're, we're reconstructing and resurfacing Geely Avenue all the way from Calumet to North 3rd Street. <clears throat> and whenever you, you do a road such as that, you always look at the the traffic control for instance if there's a set of traffic signals there and what you do is you do we, we did an in-house study there's certain criteria you look at like um the amount of traffic the amount of accidents um the, the number of pedestrians and if you have so much of each one of those that triggers you to put up traffic signal lights like for instance we're, we're putting up new signals out of south business drive and uh, georgia avenue because those those traffic signals are getting are getting triggered to be put up because of that big kind of development development at the Vanderbart. Oh yeah. Well, sense. right. This, so these these signals at 15th and Keeley were put up, put up back in 1982, and you, you you just know traffic patterns have changed. Sometimes they get bigger, sometimes they get smaller. So we did an in-house study to see if traffic signals were really needed, and they're they're not triggered. It will function better as a four-way stop. And whenever you can eliminate traffic signals, that's a good thing because number one, they're expensive to maintain. They're expensive to buy new stuff. You mm -hmm. get hit by other vehicles and just just the maintenance is a headache but if you need them you need them but we don't need them up here anymore so we drafted the ordinance to get rid of the the uh the traffic signals from 1982 and we're just now we're doing an ordinance just to install a four-way stop it'll function better as a four-way stop back in 1982 why they were put up i have no idea i'm just yeah, their land, land use changed their right. yeah. school, school the school the school is no longer there there, there was the, shopping center where they yeah. had the old the, the pick and save sure. the yeah. commercial shopping district there so there was Isn't there a lot of accidents there though weren't there like a significant amount of accidents that happened on that corner it like mean you know, like in the last the last five years no I mean, not in a, the last five yeah. years but i know in my lifetime i've yeah. got a couple yes my brother's lost some friends at yes. that intersection when you look at accidents, you go, you go back five years. That's the, okay. That's the standard. Well, what was in RCS prior to that? I'm sure that generates was, uh, part of plastics engineering. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, and they were they had some production in there as well. So, again, different types of chap traffic generators. Pretty much mm -hmm. at that time, probably needed the traffic signals. Haven't they been actually now in the last year or so been actually functioning more? They've been. Flashing red quite a bit, yeah. you know, a, a good portion of the day, anyways. Right, and that's and that's and that's part of the study too. We would we put yeah. on flashing red for for several months. Yeah, because I mean, then that that's that's a true true story. You'll see if you do have issues, and there and there was no issues besides doing the actual study and numbers and color sure. and all that stuff. So and then yeah. on Geely, where's the next like stop after that? So once you pass Fifteenth and say you're headed to the Thirteenth, I believe Thirteenth Street. Way. Got it. Okay. And when when that school went away. At, at uh, was that Washington? Yep. Yeah, we, we took those signals down. We did the same thing. We did the traffic okay. study. No longer schools and kids crossing, so we okay. yeah, ain't those out of there. Yeah. Uh, when you do these studies, do you also ask the residents? Your peers? Uh, no, I mean, you just do you do the counts. I mean, you just do the, I mean, yeah. the, the numbers tell you, which, you know, there's certain, you get an X, X amount of accidents, X, X number of cars, pedestrian crossings. You do all those counts, that's what triggers it. Yeah. And you go back five and, years and, on accidents. And, Four-way stop is one of the safest alternatives to traffic control versus traffic signals. Everyone thinks signals are, are great. They move traffic, but more accidents, especially severe accidents occur mm -hmm. 
traffic signals with green light, red light, people trying to beat the, beat the lights, accelerating through, and- Just zoning out, missing the red light. Correct. <laughs> you know. That's right. Back in the early 80s, you had Oasis Bar up there too, and that was a shot in a beer place that was very popular, so it generated a lot of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Not that I know anything about it. <laughs> I skipped that one. Man. <laughs> All right, I've got one for you. So what what do we do with the signals once we take them down? Are they gonna be like backups if somebody knocks one down on another street or you just toss it? Oh, no, Mike Mike yeah. uses what he can, but sometimes that stuff is so old. Yes, yeah. it's, it's yeah. worthless. And the newer stuff we do, we do roll on for future knockdowns and stuff like that. Okay. And parts and pieces and stuff like that as well. And none of this would be salvaged. No, actually, we updated quite a bit of the intersection. Um, so all of the stuff will be salvageable, um, other than the bases and stuff like that as well. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? General votes aye. Okay, that is approved. Okay, 3.3, resolution 382122, July 19, 2021, document 7.3, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an easement for Torganol Incorporated. And I won't write the part, read the parcel numbers. But. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, again, I will defer to Ryan. Okay. Ryan and his staff have been working on this. Uh, Tor Torganol is a pretty su successful company in town here. What they do is they add like, uh, see, we have like a, a concrete floor in a business or something. You want to add color to it, say like red chips, or you want to make a different color out of different patterns. That's what they do, and their, their business is doing very, very well. They have a shop uh, on Barron's Parkway. That, that, that's right, that's where the building is. Well, actually, they have a couple of them. This one's on Barron's Parkway. They want to buy the parcel right directly next to it for a warehouse. But between these two parcels, the city has a 50 foot drainage easement that kind of drains the industrial park. Mm -hmm. 50 foot uh, drainage easement throughout the whole industrial park. So they want to be able to go from one building to the other without going out on the street, going on the driveway. So they want to build uh, a driveway over top of our easement. So they want an easement on top of our easement. And that's, that, that's, what, that's what this grants. So they have access to go back and forth. What are they going to do with that drainage easement? They're not going to fill it in. We're gonna make them put big culvert pipes in there and it's written, Thomas has it written, they've gotta be okay. maintained, if it's gotta be cleaned, if it gets washed out for whatever reason, it's on it's on them to uh, mm -hmm. to repair. But yeah, they, they want access to be really safer and heck, you know, heck a lot more efficient than oil that's sure. coming around. Yeah. So yeah. it's just an easement on top of an easement, which is, you, yeah, you see it, it's, it's, it's a little bit different, but it works. That red stripe, right? What's that? The red stripe building? The red stripe building, um, Barron's. Is, is it a red stripe building? I don't even know. It's right, it's right next to the retention pot. Or red red accents. They're building a second building with plans to extend further. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They have a couple plans out on the industrial park also, but this, yeah, like I said, they they need they need uh, storage space. So that's that's a request. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. <clears throat> Make a motion just, to approve. Just, just to understand mm -hmm. one, so the, the easement is, we gave the easement to Torganol at prior time, and now they are getting the easement to to um, build the, the driveway. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we had an easement. Um, at one point, the city may have owned the land, and we, we established a drainage easement. Mm -hmm. So that that didn't necessarily come from Torganol, oh, um, it, okay. you know, at, at some point in the past, and we are now giving them an easement over our drainage easement. So we are allowing them to go back and forth on top of it <laughs> because they've agreed to create a, a, a system where we still can drain water like we need to. So our our interests are still protected. It solves their problem. But it also shifts all of the obligations and all of the costs onto them because we're perfectly happy with the status quo. Mm. So because they want this, that's fine. Yeah. That's their problem. Yeah. Thank you. Good. And these chips are really nice, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like I know this. Wait, I see it does. I just had Fortress uh, a couple months ago. I had Fortress floors here in Sheboygan. Do my garage floor, what a difference. 
and I, two of my neighbors are going to do it now also yeah, because of that. Yeah, yeah. I was amazed how it pitted that thing got up over almost 38 years. They came in and grounded down. They went through the whole process. They got there at seven o'clock in the morning and they were done at one o'clock in the afternoon. It's really cool. 2,300 bucks, but worth it. All righty, any other discussion? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to be in second. Mm -hmm. All right, any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. We go with uh, 3.4 resolution 39 July 19, 2021, document 7.4. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an addendum to the contract with Holt Infrastructure and Environment LLC for design services related to the South Side Interceptor System Rehab Access Road Shoreline Protection Program. There. Mr. Chairman, yes, it's right on right right the wall here. Okay. And then, you know, again, I'll, I'll let Ryan kind of explain this. Sure. We, as I mentioned, we kind of gave you a, a little precursor of the project. It's about 8,000 feet long. Look, South Lakeshore from a little bit, you know, north of King Park all the way to the treatment plant. It's a 60 inch diameter concrete pipe that handles probably approximately 50% yeah. of all the sewage that comes to the plant. So 50% of the city is part, part of also the town of Sheboygan uh, flows through this as well. We're a regional plant, mm -hmm. not just city. So we're, we, we treat sewage from Town of Sheboygan, Town of Wilson, Kohler, Sheboygan Falls, for instance. So with this project, you know, we're talking shoreline protection, protection of that asset, manholes need to be reconditioned and everything. The pipe is in good condition. We did that assessment, so that's a good, a good uh, thing. But we still have to clean the pipe and protect. And in order to protect it, there's going to be literally tons and tons of stone and large revetment that is going to be needed to be trucked in. We're looking at Lakeview Park as a, as a, a staging point and as well as an area uh, north of King Park around Indiana in that area. Nevertheless, this is going to affect a lot of different properties along here and we need access agreements as well as easements potentially. So as part of that, we're going to have to have legal descriptions and that described. And eventually, once we get those legal documents written, legal descriptions of, of the land that's needed for the easements, we will then in turn then need to engage another consultant that actually goes out, negotiates value, looks at the value, and um, will purchase those and they're limited. In some cases, there are limited easement in terms of, they're just for the construction. They're not gonna be permanent. We don't need them once it's built and we don't have to have access to their property anymore, they go away. But uh, Ryan, if you wanna explain a little bit more. Um, in yeah, terms I guess of, so we, we wanna build a 12 foot access road along there. So, so this access to that sewer now is impossible. I'm guessing back in 1936 when they, when they installed this thing, they probably had three or 400 feet of sand out there is real easy access so we need to build an access in order to build this 10 or 12 foot access road at the bottom of the bluff we're going to need to creep on some of those properties right. some of some of the slopes of those properties and i think the people are going to be in favor of this because it's it's going to help stabilize their their, their right. stroke okay. this, this kind of goes back to what we mentioned before there's a mutual benefit here right. we need to get access to some of their property where it comes down but it's also going to benefit their property by by providing added protection long term for shoreline and, and wave action that over the years has eroded some of this area. Yeah, and we just can't go on people's properties. We need to need legal right. They got to sign off. It's got to go through Thomas's office. And so we're are, we're anticipating hopefully mutual benefit here, cooperative property owners that would see the see the benefit. And and, and for the most case, we're we're, we're not anticipating. Uh, to pay for these easements, but as part of the process, we need to go through the steps to protect ourselves because that that's their they have that right. And if what we'll do is we'll do the full narrative appraisal and, and, and go through a process. 
just in case if we don't get a cooperative property owner that says no way there's no way you can come on my property we all ultimately have the proper documentation the relocation orders the proper steps in place to ultimately have to go through the eminent domain process we never like to get there and that's a worst case scenario in most cases we've we've been able to negotiate and come to a mutual understanding but it is a process we go through and, and this is just the first step we got to get the legal descriptions described we'll go out get those full narrative appraisals we'll get the relocation orders and once we have those legal descriptions back and uh, go through the process so what will fourth infrastructure and environmental LSC actually do they will thirty thousand dollars they're going to provide the actual legal description they're going to go out and survey and provide that description for each parcel along here which then we'll have that's a legal document that we'll have then um, we have we have surveyors in our department that can do this work but right now uh, we're so busy and since both already is designing this they, they'll they'll know exactly what they need for land if we would we, if we would now try to inter interject our crews in there the the danger of that is we don't we don't provide enough land and we have to re amend the legal description or come after the fact. So it's just good to use uh, the original designer. Now, this wasn't part of the original contract. We thought originally we'd have enough land and there could, we could, the, the difficulty is we're, we're, we're working in with the, what's called the ordinary high water mark along the lake shore. And, <clears throat> Agencies such as the DNR and the Corps of Engineers don't like to go out in the water with new structures. Uh, so if anything, you build within and you build back into the bank, and that's what we have to do. Therefore, we have to, when we laid this all out, we did find out that, yes, we're starting to encroach in some existing properties. And the, the other piece of that $30,000 is the title work. And there are some hundred year title searches and those are that's expensive. Right. <laughs> that's probably the majority of the work. <laughs> uh, when when will this be completed then? And when, when the, will the actual hauling start then? We're, 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 we're hoping that this could be constructed next year where the plans are probably about 75% complete. Uh, this next phase, we're hoping to get out with the weather yet this year. We should have that wrapped up uh, early fall. Probably come back with some additional documents back to this committee for the relocation order process. Uh, and then right now, I think we're, we're anticipating, you know, as I mentioned, it's about $8 million. We're thinking they're talking with the city administrator that potentially the ARPA money would be best possible use. Because um, $8 million of infrastructure on the wastewater rates, and Steve, I think you did, did a quick calculation, it, 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 it significantly jacked up your quarterly water bill. So there's an opportunity that this is beneficial to everybody by using that funding that we had got from the feds that that keeps your water and sewage bill at today's rates. By using that that money and it's eligible this is an eligible activity for the ARPA funding so there's a, there's that's what we'll be discussing further as as we get further along and we start talking about the uses of it and that's you know not not set in stone by any means but it's 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 um, a, a good potential and it and it benefits again all the community because we all use the sewage <clears throat> treatment plant we all flush our toilets, so ultimately everyone benefits in that savings. And once once Forth does their work, um, will the city negotiate with owners, or will, will they do that first? We there's there's another there's another firm that we use that does that specifically. And Ryan, you can explain explain that. They're they're actually they're I don't know what they are. Uh, they're not a realtor, but they're so there's a there, there's one gentleman saying okay we need 50 square feet of your property there's one gentleman he does the appraisal saying okay that's 50 square feet worth whatever hundred dollars and there's another gentleman that does all the 
actual acquisition, you make sure you get the right forms on time, you get this form within 60 days, you have to return it within 60 days. He's the one that goes through all of there's certain, and that, that why, like David mentioned, it ends up in, in the domain where you kind of have to think it. You follow it, all the processes and procedures, and we'll have to hire that individual once we once we get this, once we, once, once, once we get all these easements drafted, and we'll talk to that company about, about going through that process, but there's an appraisal guy to see what that little bit of easements were, and then um, uh, the actual proceed. There's a, there's, there's a, it's pretty strict protocol on, Thank you. on submitting those forms. And, and if it gets to, to eminent domain, is the committee involved again, or the committee doesn't have, a, I mean, it's <laughs> not uh, involved with that? Sorry, just, I'm just curious, yeah. because that's the first time I have. Yeah, I, I, that's a good question. We typically, when we go through the relocation order, we're, we're authorized yeah, but to do yeah. that. So that the committee would be involved in the relocation order. Mm. Um, it would go through almost certainly this committee and then back to council. Um, from there, that sort of sends staff, you know, sort of gives them their marching orders as to, mm -hmm. you know, go do this. You know, I don't know that it's always spoken, but I think it's it's always unspoken. The goal is not eminent domain. You know, the, the goal is to try to work something out, hopefully long before then, but wanting to make sure we've got those those I's dotted and those T's crossed. And if it gets to that point, um, then we have all of our ducks in a row, to continue to mix my metaphors. Um, so that we can we can move forward and, and proceed to court if that's if that's where it takes us. I was just going to mention that uh, our water rates are very very good in Sheboygan, and I think it's good that we keep them that way. And I think it's a feather in Sheboygan's cap when developers come in, especially industries that use a lot of water, to know that you know that competitively we're in a very good spot, and I think we want to stay that way. So um, for $30,000, they're doing a survey and title work on 30 properties? I don't know exactly. It says right here, 30 properties. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. So, so but they're doing survey work and title work. So uh, being a realtor to get a survey done and a title done on one property is probably going to run somewhere about 2000 bucks. This is a great deal. Spot on. Could use some funds. I mean, it's, it's probably because we're doing so many properties that title company, boy, okay, we're you know, they're cutting you a deal. Yeah. 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 And plus, it's all residential. It's normal, but simply what I was thinking, like a commercial stuff. Four or five hundred bucks a property for title. Surveying to get a guy out there is what's expensive. It's just to show up. Yeah. yeah. But if you're doing them all like in a row, like that, if you're going from yeah. one to the next to the next, it's like probably a cheaper yeah. because you're yeah. going from one, one property right down the line like that. It's, it's, it's not. So to get back to your question, when, when they do sign an easement, that has to come through council and be, be approved by the committee and the common council, all those documents once they're, once they're signed. Make a motion to approve this. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. 3.5, mid-year performance report for the Department of Public Works, discussion only. That is right here. Yes, Mr. Chairman, it's there. Uh, we we want to provide the report for you this evening. I have this evening. We have the staff here. Uh, it's just for your review. Um, you know, it's again. We, we try to give you past years to kind of give you a benchmark of where we're where we've been in the past at this point mid year for the department and certain activities. It's been. I can tell you this year. It's been a, it's 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 good to be back. Uh, where I think you can see a lot of activity. Uh, I hope you were able to get here without having to go through too much detours or road construction. But uh, that's a good thing because, as you know, we we hear that all the time about the state of our roads, and we need to, we need to concentrate on that. And this year again, I think uh, is evident that we really put put a large effort into into that activity. Um, I, I'm not going to go through every every page this evening. Again, this is just informational. Um, I, I do have, as I mentioned, the, the superintendents are here. And they have like a highlight in, 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 their, in, their, in their area. But yeah. Um, that would be fun. <laughs> what I would start with, I'm ready to go. I'm going to start with Jason. Put you on the spot, Jason. And if you would turn to page two. 
we can maybe he since he has a lot of the activity with the streets and those are the most visible type of activity that you see and i'll let uh, jason talk about some of the challenges you might see some 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 stats that have decreased and you might be wondering well why i'll, I'll let jason kind of go through some of that so the main thing is cold mix we didn't use any of this winter because we bought a, a recycling asphalt hot pothole wagon so when we're done paving in the summer we dump the hot mix asphalt in the back we break it up into chunks and in the winter you know, we can put that in the recycler and it'll heat it up and we take actually the vegetable oil that gets strapped off from the recycling center and mix that in and it makes the hot mix and which is a better repair so this winter we used um, we didn't use very much cold mix our potholes are down a little bit uh, mainly we usually use the college kids uh, in the summer to uh, fill in the potholes but hiring this year has been a challenge i've only got one seasonal where i normally have three or four so the pothole is our full-time you know it's an easier job and our staff is doing more technical stuff so we're pulling them off and filling them in when we can. And the same thing with a catch basin uh, cleaning. Typically the college kids would be the ones cleaning just, out the catch basin. Just to give a perspective, right? I think we, we start our, our seasonal at around $10 to $11 right. per hour. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're way behind yeah. for, for, for seasonal type of work. And this year we really felt it. So um, yeah, it's been a struggle, especially in, in, in the work that we do for for seasonal type of work is not, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, you're out in it. Pothole filling. Pothole filling. <laughs> gar gar collecting garbage in the parks. Uh, yeah. it, it, we, you know, we, on a weed trimmer all day, so out in the heat. It, it's, it's pretty, it's not, but we're finding that at our, at our rate of pay compared to what the market, it's like the market just leapfrogged us. And, yeah. Uh, oh, it, yeah. So what are you doing about that? Well, we, we, we started we started discussions and we're we actually are establishing our budgets for next year. Yeah. And we just met with all, all the superintendents today to talk about summer seasonal. How can we adjust our budgets yeah. and how can we assure that we're going to get the right staffing to help us during this? You know, this is our, you know, we're seasonal a lot. Yeah, this this is the year where those extra hands taking the skilled labor and keeping them on the projects okay. and not having to do you know pothole filling or weed trimming or grass cutting and making sure we're getting the repairs done and making sure the facilities are up to to what they need to be repaired so. well i will say along the lake and picking up the trash has been fantastic because i haven't seen any so good job but even though you don't have help <laughs> so and then we've got out early this year the weather is favorable so we have a lot of our paving done um taylor nyack road uh, we had some oh, emergency yeah. repairs on Bell Avenue, which was a lot of asphalt, three blocks. And then the mill is supposed to be coming in sometime next week. We'll be milling 12th Street from Indiana to Greenfield uh, next week, hopefully. Well, and then we'll start asphalt, putting our asphalt down there. And then Park Avenue, we'll be paving Park from 3rd to Burlington Avenue in the next coming weeks, too. Um, one of the other things I've been doing is using some of the the street sweepers were down a little bit there too because those guys have been helping out in other areas. But um, we do have a lot of asphalt done. Going forward. If you would turn to the next page, we yeah, just take a quick overview of the recycling, Jason. Oh, the recycling's coming back down a little bit from the but it stayed up with pretty, or the garbage, I was saying, that COVID year, we jumped up quite a bit. Um, and then it's come down about only a little bit. Recycling's holding steady. Um, we've been, last year, I think we saw it was a 12% increase in recycling overall with the switch to the cans. So it's, um, I'm just finishing that. We got a grant from the Recycling Partnership. So I was putting those numbers together. So we've seen a pretty good increase in the actual tonnage of recycling. Have you been getting a lot of requests from residents about doing uh, every week recycling pickup? Some, um, not a whole lot. Okay. Um, to go to every, what's, what would it cost? What would it cost? Yeah. 
it costs two additional personnel, that's going to be your most expensive. Okay. And then two more additional trucks. Two more trucks. Actually, okay. three, because I'll need another spare. I only have one spare now, but okay. if I had two more, I, I would need an additional spare, probably. I, I find it hard that we fill it, like someone fills it weekly. Like, bi-weekly, yeah, I could understand. To, to make, City of Milwaukee just got a, a grant to go to every other week. They were every three weeks. Mm -hmm. oh. So the, the industry standard is every other yeah. week. Yeah, the people yeah. who ask me work from Kohler. Kohler does it weekly. And so they do it weekly mainly, and it's advanced disposal. And it might go away because advanced disposal just this start of the state was the only people that bought the trucks with the split hopper mm -hmm. um, where they can dump both at the same time. Mm -hmm. The problem with those trucks is um, the recycling doesn't pack right. as good as garbage because of the volume. So the recycling fills up before the garbage van, the garbage site is. Yeah. So you know what happens? You just start dumping or slicing in the garbage. Yeah. I mean, but those trucks, I mean, I think that's going to go away eventually around this area as waste yeah. management comes in. Those trucks are not that popular. They're not that popular. This spring, I was in Kansas City and I saw what they had for recycling, and that was just like they actually have like little that's bins, those little bolts. The size of that tote, that's what those people had. I mean, plus it's an open air tote. So, I, you know, you, you imagine somebody throws their newspapers in an open air tote that's going all <laughs> I mean, I, Yeah, if we didn't switch, that's what we would, we would have been forced. And I saw that and I went, oh my God, I'm so glad that what we have, what, what, you know, what, what you guys have you know, came up with is, is much better. I'm really surprised we almost filled that thing up every two weeks the recycling one and i never thought you i figured you know maybe half full but we're but i noticed more amazon boxes in there and i i, 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 I don't know but she got me a couple of denim shirts and said okay uh, yeah. <laughs> take the garbage on <laughs> the um the the public housing authority yep. apparently has not been doing recycling at they, um we've rectified that been taken care of. Okay. Yeah, we got a complaint and initiated them, and then the resident called the state, and then the state called me too. And but I told them they were were working on it. They had a hard time getting them delivered. I had I had to intervene with the, the waste company to look at all the so that's what, what was the issue, and how was it solved? I told them that they need to be recycling under the state guidelines. Otherwise, then our building inspection will come out, and then they, but we didn't have to get to that. Part. Okay, cool. So, Thank you. So I just dropped off um, brochures for them for all their units, um, so they know how to properly recycle. Jason, now that you've been in this for about a year, has it gone pretty well as anticipated? And then, in particular, in some of the neighborhoods that might be a challenge because of the alleys and getting equipment in there and all that stuff. So we still have about a thousand stops with the old truck that we do over the week. <clears throat> um, I think it's gone better than expected, quite right, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, one final one about the trash can things. I know I had a, a block of mine, Evans Avenue, that's been a pain for a while, saying that they have that big hill and some houses. How many stops are we going to go with this? Drivers getting out and actually helping people or those kind of issues? Um, there, I do not know the number off the top of my head, but there is probably, there's a handful, I don't even want to put a number on it, but it's because it's not a lot of medical stops where it's an elderly individual lives alone that the driver comes out. I mean, if it's 15 over the 18,000, 15 or 20 over 18,000 stops that the drivers go up to the driveway or or do it so it's not a lot thanks for making that happen yeah, yeah. Well, I, had a, I had a question mr chairman uh going back to the first page uh regarding the cemetery cemeteries grave soul 30 does the does, does our cemetery uh is it legal let's say for a couple would buy a grave and they're both going to be cremated in one lot can you put can you put two, two urns? Yes. I know yes. they do that in some yes. cemeteries. Yes, in one yes. you can yes. put two cremates. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. You okay. can. Yeah, and I, you I, can put it with a casket too. 
but they would just be buried by the feet. So we would not allow that. We would allow, uh, we do a full burial in a grave, mm -hmm. and then we can do in a full grave two cremates. We, oh, we would okay. not. We would not. You don't do it by that. Correct. Correct. Okay. We would just suggest two. Two okay. graves. Two. Then. Okay. How many sites do we have left? So um, we have some underdeveloped areas um, that um, we we can identify graves in. Um, I would need to get back to you on that. Is, is it 20? Is it's it's about, 100? It's, it's about 20,000. It's probably now, that, and that, that, that figure is probably about 10 years old. So, right. you know, I, I'd probably say it's probably more like 18,000 now. 18,000 more people can die and we can bury them. Yes. Okay, thank you. With that capacity. Now, they're not all planted. They're not all planted right. sites. It's underdeveloped. So it's underdeveloped. And then one of the, but in our, we have plenty of capacity in our, what I would say, our available sites. Yeah. That we have, we have two sections that are our primary new. Actually, three. Our so three. we have section 18. Yep. Um, section 20 is beautiful. We're um, putting people in section 17, just depending on what people want. We have had a large uh, business need. People are buying like um, certain ethnic groups are buying like 12 graves. They're they're buying family plots now. I think that's smart. Right. So they're buying like a section of six or 12. So as you can see, my number for graves sold has increased dramatically. <clears throat> um, but then we also have our scattering garden, one and two. Uh, scattering you have garden. A scattering one. garden? Yes, scattering oh, garden two is available, and we did a beautification project last year. Oh, that's cool. And so we I do, do offer, you know, um, burying cremates in the ground as well as a scattering garden. And it, it seems that there's the trend is more towards cremains versus full yeah, burials. Absolutely. Wow. So, I mean, price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 what is that? What is the price of a grave currently? Uh, so it would be about 650 for a grave and then about 250 to 350, just depending on if you're going to put one or two. Yeah. So know, know that um, our prices are very, very reasonable. We are looking yeah. to increase Increase oh, them for 2022, so that will be coming. So I will buy one in this. <laughs> are, we, are we running a flash sale? John, do you charge for a uh, site with a view of water or not? <laughs> location, location. I mean, you're not seeing anything. <laughs> Um, and I had a question about garbage. I know not now, but is there any thought in the future to dis discuss um, composting bins too? I was just in Austin this past week, and there the whole city has moved to. Compost. Yeah, they yeah. do recycling trash and composting bins. So you're seeing um, private com companies starting to offer. I uh, yes. Offer that yeah. com compost receipt. Yeah. Probably one of the larger, mm -hmm. larger ones, and that that's going to probably be the next shift from the industry to of diversion. Yep, it's going to be food waste. Yep. Um, you'd have to look at it honestly. The you'd have to do some studies. That I mean, the tonnage, it's landfilling's pretty cheap right now mm -hmm. too. Uh, and when that starts getting more expensive, you'll see it more. And then it's, a, it's another container, mm -hmm. it's another truck, and it's another yeah. another person. Okay. So the, the cost of doing that, you know, I think landfilling is around forty-four dollars a ton. Mm -hmm. So how much food waste? I'm at what you know. That's all the tonnage of yeah. food waste you're and compare that. So are you thinking about that in five, ten years, or like is that? Are we just like, well, just wait till that happens? Or what, 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 what it's, 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 it's a little bit of a combination of both. We're, okay. we're, we monitor the industry and the trends, okay. and if for at least for this part of, this, of the country, mm -hmm. it really isn't uh, what I would say is a hot topic. Sure. There's not there's not a real big push for mm -hmm. for it. Uh, so, yeah, well, one of the things is uh, Wisconsin was pretty progressive in, in banning the yard waste from garbage and that is a lot of the volume. So your food scraps is, is, is now is minor with our drop off site for the grass clippings and branches and so mm -hmm. forth. It gets delivered here. That All that material gets recycled or composted. It never goes to a landfill and gets beneficial reuse with somewhere it can grind the branches mm -hmm. and it can get the mulch. 
you can put that in your garden. The grass clippings, we work with a local landscaper. They take it, they compost it. They have the, they have a large farm where they can turn it and, and work it and, and get beneficial compost eventually. We just don't have the land or the space to do that. Sure. Okay. No, nope, it's a good question. And it, there's, there's a lot of those types of environmental um, trends that, that we're, we're always monitoring and trying to stay 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 on top of. Last one, I think, for me. Uh, garbage collected tons under park maintenance repairs painting. Um, do, we don't recycle at, at public parks, do we? We don't collect a difference. I know it would be hard for them to sort it, but like if we don't try, why not? We, 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 are, we are looking to convert. Uh, our vehicle right now cannot separate, okay. but that vehicle is getting aged. And there is a what we call a, a smaller version of our uh, our container trucks, mm -hmm. and that could have the opportunity to then pick up parks, and we could have both recycling and garbage in our parks uh, to be collected with, similar to how it would be at the curbside. Those types of one of the, the one of the difficulties is with the, the parks is contamination. Yeah. And yeah. that's the that's that's the big big you know it, it, in the parks it's anything goes and if the garbage can's full and they'll just throw anything into the in the recycling bin so that's that's the big dilemma because we just don't want to then haul that and all of a sudden our recycling's all contaminated then we get it, it, it ends up costing so uh, it, it's 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 it we're well aware of it we're trying to figure out what's the best method to make sure that we're getting good compliance and good collection of that material. Mm -hmm. Some communities, I'll be honest, have eliminated garbage receptacles in the, in parks. the parks. Yep. It's kind of like what you take in, you take out. Yeah, Austin <laughs> removed in their city parks. Their so that, 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 that's some, you know, that's a debate. That, that's something we're, we're going to have to analyze as a community. Are we, are we in the, in the yeah, state, the state parks? parks that's that's the other issue. So th there's there's a lot of there's a lot lot of issues in terms of you know there's some pros that we could talk about. There's some uh, things that are not so good, and how do we balance that? What what's the best possible? So we we, we spend well over two hundred hours on the garbage every okay. week. Every week. Yeah. And really, like a lot of the effort will have to start with just training the community first, right? Like you have to train the consumer first, and that's a very difficult thing to do. I guess I have a more quick question, and it kind of brings back to back to Jason. How how are we doing as a community as far as I mean? Uh, we've been as far as you know as, as our big, big contamination is there. Yeah, big... I got called out one time and got lucky because a coals dump came and plastic was flying all over the car. And um, I met this one before waste sold off at the GFL. I thought they were at the regional. Our trucks got dumped and we went through. I have not been called, we've not been fined. Uh -huh. Anything over 10% contamination is a fine with recycling. So no. uh, we've, we've been. We've been really good. I'm confused at that. That story didn't make a lot of sense to me. So they called me out and we inspected our loads, but because they they said one of our loads, some of your contamination is getting bad. Okay. Right before our truck dumped, a truck from Coles came and topped and contamination was plastic and cardboard all over the, you know, it was all the plastic bags and, and it just came everywhere. Oh, and okay. everywhere. <laughs> and our our trucks came and I'm like, what's the problem here? It's not us. And that was the only time I was called on question. So in the, in a year we have not have been fined. For, we haven't exceeded 10% contamination rate. Well, that's good to hear. That, yeah. That's really good to hear. Um, for the events for park rentals, is this what is done for the rest of the summer, or is this just what we this have here now? It's just mid year up until the end of June. So, yeah. We've basically been busy. We have been busy. We have been busy with um, park permit, permit. Mm -hmm. okay. So, citizens are using the parks, and Joe's busy. You have to rent those, um, like, the open shelters, yep. they have to rent those too. They're, they're, they're not being rented and people use them, but okay. you know, we 
put a reserve sign on there and that's yeah. for that person. Okay. But I got to commend uh, uh, to David and Don that when, when they came to this uh, group two years ago that the raise, um, you can see that, you know, okay, we have 266 rentals as of uh, half the year. I mean, we did pretty good in 2018 too, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite an increase. You know, there was questions are people going to want rent? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, they are. They want to rent. Um, they're great facilities and it's uh, really bring our revenues up too. Because we put a lot of time and effort in. For sure. We, we have people, you know, every time there's a rental, we've got to send someone in the weekend making overtime money, you know, cleaning that place up for the next rental. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time, there's a lot of time and money spent across the areas too. So it's nice that we, we had a pretty sizable increase. Okay. It's been quite a while and uh, you can see it's really paying off. Were you, are you able to add support like staff with all of this or have you just been like, okay, all right. Okay, so I'll make sure he's cleaning them. Yeah, so I mean, kind of an overview again, you know, there's treatment plant. Steve runs a fantastic facility. He's grade A. I mean, <laughs> there is such a term for sewage, but he does get he does get straight A's in his grades yeah. that he has to report for the DNR and maintaining our our proper uh, treatment and uh, water quality. So that's a good thing. Uh, I, I guess you know what what the if so for some of you newer to the council, we we about five years ago, maybe longer. The dryer project, yeah. it, it was a significant uh, capital investment that we made at the treatment plant. So there's two, two sides of treatment of sewage. You have the, the wet side and the solid side. So the process is to take the solids out of the water, manage it, and then through that process, you're cleaning the water for ultimate discharge of sewage. That water gets cleaned. To a high quality and then eventually it goes right back to Lake Michigan. Taking out the solids then there was a process where it gets thickened, it gets managed and for, for several years it went to farm fields and it got injected as fertilizer. It gets there's a certain type of equipment, it gets injected, it nourishes the farm fields and, and so forth. The difficulty with that is there's only a very limited window of when you can actually apply this to the farm fields. So what we needed to do is we had on-site storage of <clears throat> solids, millions of gallons of sludge. Mm. And it, it's a couple of times that we, we, were, we, we were getting in trouble because we're getting too full, we didn't have the capacity, the fields weren't ready, what do we do, what do we do? So ultimately, we, we looked into the future and we said, this is this has been sustainable. We cannot continue to operate this way. We're at the mercy of the weather, farm fields, who knows? And what we did is we purchased a, a large piece of equipment called the dryer. And so what we do is we take that wet solid material and we evaporate even more moisture out of it to get it more solid. Basically, it it um, it becomes a it's called a class A product fertilizer. Yep. And then it can be used, it can, doesn't have to go to a special location. It can be used anywhere. It can be used. And we, we have a contractor that now takes it for fertilizer, repackages it, and can use it. So um, it, it has significantly um, reduced our reliance on farm fields. It's reduced our cost. It was very costly. You can imagine contracting someone to pick up this, haul it in tanker trucks out to farm fields and inject it. and. Uh, it's really positioned the treatment plant and, and Steve's staff for a long-term future. It, it really eliminated a lot of headaches and helps us manage our, our solid waste, which was millions and millions of gallons down to maybe a couple thousand tons of material. Yeah, we're <clears throat> about 1,800 tons, I think, we did yeah. last year dry. So. Where in the past it was eight, eight Nine million, probably, that we, yeah. That we injected in the farm fields, but um, gallons. So, 
regardless, just wanted to let you know that has been, we've had a lot of headaches when we first implemented that project. It was, it was very difficult to get optimized. We are now at a, at a good place in, in this plant. And um, so that's a good thing. Well, I see you actually here it even shows uh, natural gas consumed is less and the produced more biosolid. Yeah, and, and we, we've been seeing a little higher loadings coming to the plant, uh, BOD and suspended solids this year. So that's what's contributing to the biogas. And then we had a boiler that can run either natural gas or biogas, and it always ran natural gas because it, was, it had problems on biogas. But we got that fixed this year, and so now it's running both. In the past, we had turbines running yet, so we were using the gas that way, but the turbines are can't be fixed any longer. So now we're using this boiler. So you are getting the, the the waste coming in the sewage and using gas off that to power the machine? No, or that's it. Bio so so the, the sludge that we process first goes to what's called an anaerobic digester, where it's digested and then that produces methane. Yes. And then that's your biogas. Yes. And that's what we burn in our boilers. And you're, you just make, it makes it outside. And it, to make yep. heat. That's, we use that for for drying and for heating our digesters. Those digesters have to be heated. So we maintain the temperature in those in the 95 it? degrees. No, I haven't toured it yet. I, okay. Yeah, you never came over. Yeah. Wow. I, I ran in there one time when I was trying to go to the power plant. Yeah, you were trying to go to the line. <laughs> Steve always willing. He's always looking yeah. for things. Hey, everybody. Okay. So what percentage of biogas compared to non-biogas? I, I couldn't, I'd have to calculate the percentage out, Mark. It's I, roughly, yeah, it's, it? it's right now, it's probably about uh, 40%, 35, 40% biogas, and then 65% natural gas in this boiler. Okay. And that's our big natural gas consumer. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're not so much in the power generating business anymore then, are we? No, we, we don't we gave generate any power. Yeah, uh, I noticed back here in 2019, it said total total plant electrical power generated, and then 20 and 21, nothing. Right. Uh, so in October uh, of 19, Jim, the last turbine went kaput. So that's when it, it, it's, it, they're just, they weren't worth fixing any longer. And But, but for a while, though, for some of the new older persons, we for a while we were actually uh, off the grid, weren't we? We're, we're, we're selling, it, selling, it, selling it back yeah. at times. Or... But it, it probably we probably generated, you know, in reality, about sixty-five percent of our electrical okay. demand. Is it just not cost? Is it cost prohibitive to put new ones in at this point, or very costly? Okay. It, 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 compared it, to the energy costs, it's yeah. It's it's better utilization of the gas for, for especially the, with natural for, gas for natural exactly. natural gas is like way up, way up in terms of so. so sure if you uh, may if you if you still have time I got Mike from facilities want to go over your area real quick Mike sure working working top top. Uh, Pop down the first two blocks. If you want to say that really uh, pertain to our street lights and traffic signal knockdowns. Uh, oh, page Mike. Uh, uh, page page seven. Seven. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, the, like I said, the, the first two blocks are really pertaining to our, our street light um, and traffic signal knockdowns. Um, we just run the metrics every single year. It varies um, whether you know, some of the knockdowns are due to inattentive driving, texting, drunk drivers are the most probably common. Um, they can, like I said, it, it fluctuates. 2016 was our worst year for knockdowns. We had one, we actually net, uh, averaged one per week. So, in 2016? In 2016. It's happening in 2016. I don't know. It's so, it's happening. It's happening. We need to look back. <laughs> So in, in the annual reports, I think in the annual reports you can see that um, and Dawn and her group um, actually you know graphed it. It's it's just big hump. It's just like big camel sitting in there, um, but it's it's just one of those things. Um, the average knockdown will range 
um, you know, a thousand dollars, and we've had them all the way up to one hundred ten thousand. Wow. And that was someone that wanted to, I don't know, if you want to say play chicken with the bridge, the A Street Bridge, and took out a, a couple of our our uh, our traffic control standards plus the arms that control the you know the arms that come down and stuff like that. So it gets kind of pricey. Um, also responsible for all the you know the signage throughout the city of Sheboygan. We also we we look at how many get knocked down. If if we were to hit do all the knockdowns versus and I just want you to say knockdown versus um hit and runs. It's everybody hits hits and runs. Uh, a lot of our traffic, uh, uh, you know, signage and stuff like that. It's one of those metrics I might I like to update and actually kind of count um, to find out what we spend per year on just hit and runs. So uh, the fourth what do we call uh, street markings? So we just finished, for the most part, all of our line striping, which is the center line, the dotted lines, the solid uh, two lines. Um, we did about 98.72 miles this year. That's a little a little off, about 11 miles off, because we also started doing repainting our bike lanes. So how so many gallons of paint is that, Mike? I do have the kit. It's over 2,000. Put that much up. I, I can get that for you. It's just a, is it you, 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 the center lines? That's what we're talking. Ninety-eight miles. It's like almost two thousand gallons of paint that go down the, on the street. So and just just we you, don't, you don't really realize, but that's a lot of you know. I do have that number. Can we do that yearly? Yes. Uh, we refresh them yearly. <laughs> so and also another metric that you'll see would be the the arrows. The stop bars, the crosswalks, um, those all get refreshed on a yearly basis. Actually, if you want to be out there at uh, midnight tonight, we will be doing the roundabout. So that, um, oh. so and that's very that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> eighth, eighth in Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's the only time we, we can get it really painted because it's the lowest level of traffic. Otherwise, it's constantly moving. It's almost impossible to, we, we'll, we'll barricade. And we'll send people off in a certain direction yeah. while paint's drying, but we'd still have to allow access because the Blue Harbor area only has that's its only access. So we kind of get out there and we spray paint and look around and <laughs> say, don't drive for a couple of minutes, just stay back. Yeah. I think midnight on a Tuesday makes sense. Yes, yeah, it's one of the lower, yeah. They still want you to No, I don't want you Traffic tire marks going That's got to be the worst. That's got to be the worst. So, hey, don't take, don't take your, your vet out tonight. No, don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then just the other, um, uh, we do, we do, um, hold on, before you, Go off of the crosswalks and traffic errors. Why are we down compared to the past <laughs> years? Like in we're not 20... done yet. We're not done yet. So mid year 2020, you were at 367. This year, you're like almost half. Right. So a lot of this is uh, due to weather. Well, okay, gotcha. So if if we, we get out or something like that, we start. Um, you'll see our next quarter really ramp up. Gotcha. Okay. And you'll probably see it pretty much end. So by the end of this week. Um, Tyson, one of my lead men, we're looking at trying to get probably 95% of the arrows throughout Sheboygan uh, finished along with, uh, with uh, the roundabout and stuff like that. So that will vary, and it's all weather dependent. You know, just like with, with Jason's crews and stuff like with construction, so it's all weather dependent. So any of the lines are off, I can text Tyson and tell him, like, yeah, I know yes. you messed that up. <laughs> if you see little footprints leading from them, yeah. <laughs> the tire it's a ghost. Yeah. The tire tracks were <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, do you have any of the utility costs from City Hall prior to the rental compared? We've been in yeah. there now since September of 19. Uh, are we saving any money on utilities with old City Hall compared to new? So we, we did we, we did measure the amount of money. We actually doubled. So going from our going from the old we'll call it the old facility to the new facility. Um, we did run the numbers a little bit, and we, we saw the much for actually doubles. Well, and there's there's a reason why for all that. Mm -hmm. What goes into city hall now, motor wise, 
and meaning the mechanicals is, is triple, even more than that of what we actually have. Yeah. We had um, we had one boiler. Uh, now we have we have two very efficient boilers, which are good. We have two air in units, one in the basement, one on fourth floor. Never had that before. Um, we have a chiller that we're running. We have two Lieber units that run for the IT department. We have another uh, AC unit sitting in for the IT equipment for um, council chambers. The amount of lights has increased dramatically. We're now using the basement as an office space. Never used to do that. Um, so um, the, the electric usage that has gone up, um, I'd have to take a peek at, at, at the gas part of it, but also we increase the square footage, 11,000 square feet roughly, the uh, atrium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll call it, the atrium is a little more difficult to <laughs> Yeah. So it's a lot of large area. If, if you look at the electrical, it has gone up. But I think if you, I think if you look at the overall city hall maintenance budget and where we're at, it's pretty close to where we were overall. So I think what I think we I have that as, as we had that as part of the budget. I, we can provide that. It's it's like a ten year analysis mm -hmm. of about seven years before and the last two three years. So yeah, the Mike Mike is correct in terms of let's say like electrical for strip usage. But gas is gas is pretty close, um, and there's some other factors in there. But we we'll we'll be happy to share that. I mean, just on a quantifiably happiness as far oh, as being, you know, the control. I think, I think even <laughs> civilian like coming in and being yep. in the space is much different, and like filling out the forms and drop, like it's well, just a different experience now. Than it wasn't all fully your future. Yeah, that's true. had a couple of window units, but they were so yeah. ineffective you, did, you couldn't even run them. Yeah. And you couldn't listen to the, the meeting couldn't occur because they were so loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the building overall is so efficient. I mean, first floor by Chad's area, the old one, you sat on a on a on a windy day. You could pull dry your hair. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, the efficiencies are, are 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 great on that building. So, in all of my years on the council, one of the meetings I remember most in in the old city hall in the summer was 90 degrees or 95 degrees was the meeting that we had on whether we were going to ban pit bulls or not. Well, the people couldn't bring their pit bulls up to the council chamber, so they were down on Center Street and they were all barking. And we had the windows open because we had to turn the air conditioners off, so we couldn't hear. What Oh, what's going on? <laughs> the pit bulls barking down here for an hour. I mean, it, it was it was just ridiculous. We didn't ban them, by the way. <laughs> we, had the bottle, we wanted the bottle. We wanted the, the owners to disperse before we walked out. If you just get to let the dog loose. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that was just a kind of a quick high level overview. You can, you can look at the data. We'll be happy to provide more. Yeah, and that's great. All all goes gets fed into ultimately our annual report, which has more narrative, more description. We'll have photos, and actually, we're looking. This is an older type of report that used to feed into a different report that is no longer needed, and we're going to be looking to probably upgrade it a little bit and have a little bit more more information. So we used bit. to have to provide quarterlies and have an IMC, and now. We were told by the new administration we can do semi annually. So we're hoping to maybe put together a presentation and maybe a small, I guess, version of our annual report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. right. And then yeah. that would just be a natural extension as we finish the year. A lot of it will just feed into the, the annual report. Yeah. Also, great job on the paradigm. Oh, um, yes, thanks. That was going to be my last thing. Yeah. Sorry. I hope you all go to Uptown Parklet downtown, enjoy a cup of coffee or a mug of beer, and enjoy the new public space. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, thank job. you. This report was not attached to the agenda, was it? Was it, was it the, the, the report? No. no, no, no. And is there a reason for that? Um, we, we just typically don't, it's not a best practice. Um, we, because in the past, I haven't been able to attach this report due to the old administration. I was only able to just attach a high-level IFC. 
So we're kind of finding our way with the new administration, what the criteria is, so no. But yeah, next and time I think it's- Generally speaking, I think it's a good idea to have documents ahead of time wherever um, it is legally possible. That's my opinion, Matt, because you need time to even do with the numbers, you need time to look sure. at and to digest them and so on. So whatever possible, that's something I personally would appreciate. I this would agree. I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem sharing we it in advance. To attach it. Maybe sometimes it's not legally possible. No, 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 it's, no. It's, it's, there, it was, there's, there's been a change in administration and how, how information was shared. And I, I think, you know, by all means, I, I, I agree. The more I, we can give you it well in advance to review. Because then you can come to the table with questions instead yep. of hurrying up and looking right. through this. That's correct. And, you know, looking for questions. So, yeah, you got it. Great. Right. Absolutely. All right. Anyone else have anything to say? Um, next meeting date is August 10th. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. So made and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.